Sometimes you just want to play a nice casual game of Stellaris, explore the stars, meet new friends, overcome adversity. Which is exactly why I created the worst pockmarked creature that ever crawled out of the primordial muck that I could think of. Awful traits, a terrible planet, and of course, the ring map. Because clearly, I hate myself. Now all of this to ask ourselves the question, can I survive the ring? Usually that would be yes, however this map is horrible, there's a bunch of terrible stuff going on, and I like to intentionally hobble myself, so I went with the overtuned origin, because clearly our horrible genetics, which clearly don't have anything to do with the star that we orbit, uh, can be overcome with overclocking our genome, cutting down the length of our already pitiful lives, and just be really angry with the universe around us. However, we know that there are some godlike creatures out in space who possess the secret of immortality, and clearly they didn't want to give it to us, otherwise, you know, we'd be out there being cool and immortal. In the end, we're just ticking time bombs of tissue. So, two options. Either we go to war with these gods, take immortality for ourselves and live forever, or we devastate the universe, encase our bodies into synthetic metal, and allow us to live forever. Seems like a win-win to me. Sound familiar? Well, this video was made possible by Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus. Ever wanted to transport yourself to your future where there is only war? Well, Tacticus allows you to do just that. The game is set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe and you can command your champions over intense turn-based tactics battles on both iOS and Android. Fight with champions from the Imperium of Man, the Orcs, Tyranids, Tau, and of course, my personal favorite, the abominable Xenos that are the Necrons. Didn't those guys claw themselves out of some sort of environment where they were then encased in glorious Necrodermis in order to live forever? Sounds glorious to me. Yeah, you used that gauze war gear on that Ultramarine. Clearly, the Emperor's Angels made a bad call coming to our tomb worlds. And it doesn't stop there. The developers recently rolled out everyone's favorite Omnissiah worshipping faction, the Adeptus Mechanicus, with four new champions for you who can channel the Motive Force to bring glory to the Forge world of Mars. The game is free to play and you can download it now. Use the link in the description or the top comment below, or use the QR code that you're seeing on top of the screen. And go on a crusade across the galaxy as the Imperium of Man, wog across the stars as an orc, or consume the galaxy for the hive mind. Download Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus today. First things first, we're gonna need to do some expansion, we need to know what's around us, we need to start scouting. That's like the number one thing that we do in any situation. Find some planets, etc. However, in our particular case, we also want to get to genetic engineering as fast as possible because we need to get this trash out of our systems. It's so important because it's already reducing our habitability on other worlds, and if we don't do that, we're gonna get rebellions everywhere, which is definitely not good. Secondly, when it comes to ascensions, I am really a big fan of statecraft these days, especially the Among Peers, which is one of the first ones that you can get for it. Essentially, it gives you an additional 150 experience per skill whenever you get an agenda. And you basically just wait for the first agenda to be done, get this particular one, and then it just boosts your leaders for a very early strong uh boost basically and then you can just go away from there leaders should not be underestimated especially your council in our case we've also gone for the uh dark matter counselor which will basically make sure that our economy is in a good place because who knows what happens on the ring the ring really does not like to you know play along very well so we need to be careful here statecraft is a very very safe choice once that is out of the way, I like to go and dip into Discovery, specifically getting access to uh, the basic ones, just so we can get the Edict, as well as Science Division, so we can get additional research alternatives. It's going to be rather important in order to make sure that we maximize our science output. I also found some Pyre Treasures, so that Map the Stars Edict is immediately paying off. So we jump through the usual hoops, we get ourselves our first expansion planet, which for some reason at size 15 is larger than our capital. Capitals are usually supposed to be around like size System 20. Survey. This is way too small and now I don't have any minerals. So this is already a fun time. Regardless, after plodding along in this absolute hellscape of a map, we finally, after about 16 years, managed to get genetic engineering to get this crap out of our system and try to hypercharge our genes because that's who we are apparently. 
So of course we'll hollow ourselves out completely and add some additional intelligence into the mix because it's it's it, we're not gonna live otherwise. We need the tech boost. It's it's horrible out there. Except it would take us 193 months to actually run this project, and I don't really have the time for this, so I'll continue plodding along with these horrible traits until we can get the society research to actually make this happen. <sighs> Let genetic engineering be the hopes and dreams of your species, they said, and then they gave you the clock and the timer attached to it. Good times, everybody. Well done. Then finally, in 22 to 26, first contact finally happens on the ring. Good times. It's mining drones. Yup. Second contact happens like another 10 years, except it's now void creatures. So now I'm officially pinned in between two space creatures without being able to talk to anybody. The ring is extremely lonely. Can I go home now? As we're looking to unlock the mysteries of immortality that have been stolen by us, by these gods, uh, the most important thing that we can do at this moment in time is look for astral rifts. Because if we go into enough astral rifts, we should be able to find the gods' hideout and take their technology to make ourselves immortal. So this rift being here is really good. We just can't go in it yet. We'll get there. And because we're genetically hobbled so much, it means that we can't really live in a lot of places. So getting terraforming is one of the more important things that we can get. We've got the energy for it. It's five thousand at a pop to turn a planet into our style. Except all the candidates that we have are all terrible because of the inherent modifiers that they have. I don't really have a lot of choice here, so we're going to need to terraform them anyway. But it's... <laughs> Slim pickings. Slim pickings on the ring. Anyway, after messing around a little bit, I finally managed to get the Rift Sphere tech. I would like to point out that I haven't seen anybody yet. It's 2253. I got Rift Sphere tech before first contact. Real first contact. I'm very concerned because there's 52 other species on the ring. 52. And I haven't seen anything. I'm terrified. We do, however, finally have enough society research to push ourselves to the limit and basically hollow ourselves out so we can finally get that modification project started and try to get a hobbledness out of the way and just have, like, the most vanilla species ever before we can do all the cool stuff. And then, 70 years after the start of the game, it finally happens. First contact. Like, we've been alone for so long, and what is the first thing that we see in space? It's a criminal syndicate as part of a common ground origin. They're going to spread crime. They're not going to bring their best to our to our home. And we can't do anything about it because they're backed up by a whole alliance. I hate this game. Oh, great. And here come the illegal franchises that do nothing but add crime to my worlds. So much for my economy, I guess, because there's nothing I can do about this until I do something about this. On a more positive note, though, we've managed to genetically engineer ourselves in such a way that we're super smart, but we live only, like, what, 20 years? And we managed to get the Infinity Root, which is one of the worst relics that came with Astral Rifts. So no, nothing, it's, it's not really looking up. I finally managed to get some minerals, though. That's, that's, a, good, that's a thing, good thing, I guess, because... The economy is just complete and utter garbage because they just don't have any minerals anywhere. Which means I can't build alloys or consumer goods. And I don't have any of those. Because I horribly underscope my economy when it comes to minerals and alloy production, etc. It means I can't build much of a fleet, which means that I can't really go to war with this um, common ground empire next door. So the only real way for me to get out of here is go the other direction and see if there's anything over there. There's Marauders, which makes that route completely useless as well. The only real way I could see getting out of here is uh, building habitats to get my mineral production under control. And then try to either smash this common ground or escape into the Elk Cluster. But that's going to open up all sorts of problems, potentially. Fun. It took only, what, 120 years till I got access to the... Um, the Nightbringer's Gift, the portal to another area in the galaxy that we currently cannot go through, because if we do so, the Aberrant on the other side are going to completely smash it. And 
the problem is whatever is sitting on the other side of that gate is the thing that we need to make our leaders immortal and otherwise we're just gonna go full, full synthetic if we can't get immortality here because yeah our, our fleet are not going to be shooting down any unbidden fleets at this moment in time no matter how advanced i am and also the con woke up blessfully far away not those marauders that were right next door to me but still he woke up good luck everybody all right i've had enough it's time for war it's been pretty anemic flight wise the big problem is they've got like a big station we're sitting right on the border which is problematic especially when you're only throwing like 32,000 fleet power into, a into their general direction especially 150 years into the game yes i'm also extremely ashamed of that don't you worry too much about it because the ring is horrible and you should never play it and i suffer so that you don't have to regardless uh we're gonna go ahead and just uh, smash these guys into submission win this war go home celebrate and then i don't know kiss nurses in times square or something like that i i, I think that's what soldiers do or, or sailors i don't know and that's their last fleet smash all of their planets are under my control and that should be victory on my side which should shut Cancel down all of their ready. stupid criminal branches which means that my economy can actually recover and i can actually keep the the ball rolling don't you worry guys we'll be back in 10 years to properly subjugate you we just need to you know make sure that we get all this crime issue out of the way first and because I uh, went down the path of da Dark Matter Consortium, it means I also can get access to all this nifty Dark Matter technology without even trying to hassle one of the Fallen Empires. So at least I got that going for me. Except I don't know anybody, but I'm still stuck in this corner of the galaxy. Quick dash of a second war. Don't you worry, we can get this under control. It's just for civilization. And all of a sudden I get first contact with like a million species from the other side of the galaxy. I'm not entirely sure how that happened because clearly there's nobody nearby. And all of a sudden they say hi from like five different species. Okay, that's cool I guess. 160 years. 160 years it took him. The Khan is already dead. They, the, 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 they have splintered. Now, the, now it's time for the galactic community. Clearly, that's that's exactly what we need. 160 years in. Stop contacting me. Dude, I, I don't want this first contact. This is why I hate the galactic community. There's way too many other empires trying to contact me. It's just... I think I've managed to find one of the weirdest things I've seen in this game yet, and that's seeing something. There is an empire capital within this marauder system. Somehow. There is a lot of them. There's like 70 on this planet. I have no idea how they got there. But they shouldn't be here. This is a marauder system. What are you doing? Like, you shouldn't be here. Discovered. And why do you have so many armies? That makes absolutely no sense. Where is your economy coming from? Like, what's it? What, what is this? Like, wh where is it all coming from? Like, it's not going to stop me orbital bombarding you to, uh, you know, gain control of the fleets. planet. But still, questions need to be asked here. Inquiries need to be made. Okay, so we're a little bit more comfortable now. We got several planets under our control that we didn't have before. We have a few vassals, so that's at least something. Now we can take a look at getting the throne under our control and finally become immortal as we should be. So, obviously we're going to be fighting some unbidden style enemies, specifically the aberrant. So we're going to need some kinetic weapons to go for full-on anti-shield. Because they don't have any armor, so that doesn't really matter. But we need to knock out their shields, so this uh, here uh, kinetic artillery should do the trick just fine. And now the Fallen Empire next door has decided to awaken. Because, you know, we definitely needed that being thrown into the mix. Okay, went through the gate, made contact with the Formless. A Barret are coming. So we just need to get our battleships in a good position here. Because they will spawn in the middle of the actual system. And this is kind of like a like a, like a wave defense sort of situation. The fleet will, fleets will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Until I think we had like five waves or something like that. And then we win... And then we have a 75% chance of getting the throne. If we don't get it, we go synthetic. If we do get it, then biological overclocking all the way, baby. So a little bit of background on this one. Basically, what we're doing here is we are trying to hold the line Engaging until we can get the seal please. situation finished. And then we basically claim uh, the formless as a, un uh, as a luminary vassal, which will give us a bonus to, uh, to research. In the meantime, as I mentioned, the Aberrant will keep on flying into the system with their ships. And we need to keep them at range or as much as possible because they do a lot of damage with their uh, mat of disintegrators. And we want to avoid them at all costs. Still, though, we should be able to punch them down with all those kinetic weapons. 
and then we should be good. Then we should be just just great. And there it is. The seal has been sealed, and now it's time to go through that that dialogue section. Remember, seventy five percent chance that we make it, twenty five that we don't. So odds are pretty good. We got it. Good. Excellent. Okay, excellent. So we will have the throne under our control, which means that we can go down the biological engineering path. We are now basically gods because we just stole immortality from said gods. And um, technology discovered. the galaxy will tremble, basically, because they are nothing before us. And because the uh, throne basically makes us immortal instantly, it basically means that the type of origin that we have, i.e. the uh, genetic overclocking variety, means that we can just go ham because all the negatives of the genetic engineering no longer affect us. Previously, every single adjustment would reduce our lifespan by 10 years, or at least the lifespan of our leaders. They are now immortal. This negative is no longer exists. We can go absolutely ham, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to overclock the ever-loving crap out of our pops, and they're going to be the smartest people around. Yeah, good luck to the, to the rest of the galaxy, because you're about to be left in the dust by the uh, superiorness of, uh, of ourselves. Wait. Gateways? There's gateways on this map? I, th I thought they were disabled. Research project concluded. But a fallen empire can build them, so... Why not us? I, I want gateways. So I decided that I needed to get a little bit more living space for my empire, get a couple more vassals, and basically have the um, the loading bar that is the Circle Galaxy more under my control. Then comes the Unbidden, because of course they come. I have no idea where they are. They're on the map somewhere. Uh, hopefully no nowhere nearby, even though my fleets are kitted out to kill them. But let the, let the galactic community deal with them, because I am really not interested. I found them. They're on the other side of the galaxy. They're not going to cause any problems. Thank God. There it is. 220 years into the game. Finally. Gateways. No longer will my ships be completely obsolete by the time they hit the front line. The Unbidden are starting to become a little bit concerning, because they seem to be expanding unopposed and effectively playing tag your it with planets. So the Fallen Empire has been at war for a while now. They've awakened, and they're a lot bigger than I anticipated. But uh, apparently they've neutron sweeped the future. That's the name of the planet, future. They've neutron sweeped it. They killed everybody there except for the infrastructure. Because that's how they roll, the fanatic spiritualists. So, <laughs> And this is what happens if you leave the unbidden unchecked. The second portal will open, and then you have the aberrant. And then the third one will open, and you have the vehemence. Like, they'll fight each other. Like, it's it's probably, like, uh, Thunderdome down there between all the unbidden factions. But still, like, do something about it, please. The galactic community seems to have finally deployed a task force to deal with them, and they've just managed to destroy two portals so far. So that's at least something. But still, you know, it's slowly going through, and they're being put through the grinder just a little bit. But that's their problem, not mine. So that's, you know, a thing. Also, it's 250 years into the game and I finally made first contact with the traders. 250 years until I managed to make first contact with the traders. I have not been able to gamble for relics all this time. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. I'm sick and tired of this, though, because there's just no movement forward. There's no movement backwards. There's only one thing I can do. And that's just end it all. We're gonna be go we're gonna go down the crisis route. We are gods. We will stand above these puny mortals, and that that's the end of it. Uh, the the galaxy will tremble. The universe will tremble. In the grim dark future, there is only war, my war, because as the uh, crisis, we need to destroy as many things as we can as possible to get crisis levels. We need ten thousand points in total to get to the aerophasic engine, which is totally doable as long as we know. Um, we're just going to go straight for the jugular and just go right after the custodian. We'll cut him completely down, start purging all of his worlds, get bad boy points, and just be done with it. Because I I don't want to be in this galaxy anymore. The problem is we got an L-gate in our empire, and if I don't protect that, uh, they're just going to stream back and forth. In. I need to put something on that L-gate at all, all times, otherwise we're just screwed. Yeah, those bad boy points are coming along nicely, purging a couple worlds, bombarding them from orbit, just annihilating everything in sight slowly but steadily the worst thing that can happen now however is that everybody else declares me a crisis and then we have a problem 
We have a problem. Okay, so the entire galaxy has decided to go to war with us now because for some reason they don't think that A, I should be a crisis, B, I should have vassals, and they want some of that. And now because, you know, they're, they've are they defeated some unb unbidden, they think they're all high and mighty and can actually do something against me. The problem is they've managed to get through the L gate, which means that they've managed to effectively cut me in half, which means the south part of my empire is basically thrown away at this moment in time but as long as i keep on killing them i will keep on getting bad boy points so i'm just gonna sit in the elgate system and shoot them as they come in and maybe def defeat them in detail if i can and i get some opportunities if they no longer stack on top of each other just jump in pot shots get out and before you know it, I'll have an aerophasic engine online. And it'd even be better if I can, you know, um, piece out of some of these wars that I got going on. And just take them all one by one instead. I seriously like the astral action of being able to summon an unbidden fleet. It is just so annoying because everybody's just flying around with gigantic stacked stacks of unbidden. And there's nothing you really can do about it because they effectively get them for free. And it adds like a million fleet power on the enemy side. Like, what am I supposed to do about this? Like, it's so stupid. No, oh, there it is. We're officially declared crisis, which means that we got the aerophasic engine. Oh, look at that beauty. Isn't it glorious? I love it. It's so good. Let's end this galaxy. And now the slow march of inevitability begins because the game is running really slow because there's so many pops within the galaxy. So basically I get like a second per tick or something along those lines. So our ships are not moving very fast. I would also like to point out that we are about, what, 280, 290 years into the game. And, uh, well, my star eaters are slowly but steadily getting through and trying to speed up the game a little bit. But that aerophasic engine needs to stay online. Thankfully, I've got all the resources in the world to fight off the enemy as they try to stream into the uh, into the empire. But still, you know, what are you going to do, right? Like at this moment, it's it's there's nothing really that the enemy can do because I've held the line against them successfully on multiple occasions. And my fleets are just getting bigger and bigger because the aerophasic engine is just adding more and more fleet power to um, to my empire. So I've already held the line against them. They cannot increase anymore. Uh, my Star Eaters are slowly but steadily just churning through enemy systems, taking down uh, planet after planet, system after system, and they're not going after them at all. So they're just collecting dark matter for the sake of it, and I can just buy it on the market as well, because uh, in case you didn't you realize, I'm also Dark Matter Consortium. Which means that I get a lot of dark matter to begin with. Engaging so this should be a walk in the park from this moment onwards. Like, there's nothing they can do. The end is nigh. Oh look, primitives. First contact. That's cool. Alright, what do we got here? Greetings. Alien encounter, okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, their first and first contact is also going to be their last contact because um, my Star Eater is about to take their world. Right as they manage to make first contact with aliens. Uh, we're just building a highway here. Uh, they're ba we're basically the Vogons at this moment in time. Um, yeah, that's that's very unfortunate for them. Late game Stellaris is just such a such an exercise in patience because everything takes so long because the game slows down to a grind even on a crazy system as as, as i have but still you know it's um the aerophasic engine has too many stages i think because i think it's like four or something like that and at some point you've effectively won like i have effectively won already like there's nothing i can do about it uh or like that the any other empires can do about it and now it's just a long wait at a very slow tick rate for me to go ahead and press that button like that's it this is the game running on fastest it's um you know sure the the, the enemy tries to do one last hurrah sort of approach but this is what i gotta deal with right this fight should have been over like five minutes ago uh yeah just 
destroying stars left, right, and center, waiting for the last tick on the aerophasic engine to be done. I had to sacrifice some of my stars while we are at it because I couldn't be uh, bothered anymore. Cannot crack this to place anymore because it already has a black hole, so that's unfortunate. But still, you know, there's more than enough opportunities to do stuff in there. It is. A beginning and an end. Destiny awaits. Should we activate the engine? Well, the government's epic shift in the Commonwealth is not really going to help all that much, but... This is the galaxy. This is everything. Everything that has ever existed and will ever exist. Such a shame, really. Let's uh, make a quick, quick save file here. We'll call it Ascension. Gloriousness. Ah, and we win. GG, Empire of the Ring has won. And apparently one of our leaders has died, so a private procession has to be made as well. <laughs> For some reason, the um, my capital is the Long Eater Orbital Habitat instead of my capital world, which is kind of weird. But yeah, uh, these are all the empires that died. This is the galaxy. Uh, really weird setup with all these weird wormholes everywhere. And if I go into any system now, the star will explode. Uh, L, L cluster up there, of course. Leaders dying left, right, and center. But we've ascended. And we are the gods now. We are the ones that stand on top of everybody else. And it only took a class 60 singularity to, to pull it off. Screw all these guys. You try to keep me down. I was garbage at the start. But now we are gods. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank the people over at Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus as well for making this video possible. Make sure that you go ahead and uh, download that game. The link is in the description down below. But still, all good things have to come to an end. And we're going to leave this galaxy behind us and look towards something else. What else do you want to see me suffer through? Because this was 400 years of horribleness. Leave it down in the comments below. I'm looking, looking forward to see what sort of terrifying things you want me to do next time.